Oh, okay. How did you make the choice of going back with Chris then, for choosing? Hmm. Um, well, I thought as we had to do the record, I mean, first of all, I think we had a lot doing some good things with him before, mm. you know, and he, and he goes back a long way. Yeah. And he was also doing some, you know, he was still working very much, and he was still much in, in the swim of things, and he just come off quite a successful record with the skate club and so on. And he was, mm. I saw him in Australia when I was touring there, and he, he was working with a band in the studio. And it sort of reminded me, you know, sometimes people were sort of out of sight, out of mind. Yes. And I thought um, that as we had to do the record quickly, we didn't have a lot of ch choices to sort of um, have that period where you're dusting off rough edges with people and getting to know them. I thought that was a combination of, of the, the fact that we'd done the things in the past and that he was still working in, in, in the smooth things. And that, you know, we wouldn't have to go through that quite long process sometimes. Mm. And, you know, he's, he was just there at the right time and uh, everyone seemed to think it was a good idea, so that's how it happened. Mm. And I think he's done a very good job. To, working with a committee is always difficult, mm. as most people know, mm. um, that work, that have jobs. You know, you always have to, you never can do quite what you want. No, you can't really do what you like. It's so, I mean, you, doing solo projects, you have more say. So you don't have completely 100%, otherwise you wouldn't have worked with good people. I mean, they do contribute things, but there's more committee work to do yes. with a band, and I don't ever enjoy that, and I don't think anyone does, right. apart from those people that are just born to be sort of secretaries to sort of endless committees, and when they get home, they become the secretary of the housing committee, or <laughs> so on. I mean, but I, I don't really enjoy the committee's part of it. That's the sort of thing I don't like about it. Mm. Um, I never had it. What I do like about it is the kind of family kind of aspect of it. I was afraid that that was going to be the problem here, that we were, weren't going to be able to, that we were going to be stuck in this reruns of the Rolling Stones groove and like play all the licks backwards. Mm. Though there's quite a bit of traditional material in this album, like, so which emanates from me, you know, after I'm always one that moans about it, and I come out with all this, like this one, you know, I come out with these sort of very traditional songs. But um, at the beginning, you know, I, I said, well, look, don't let's limit ourselves. You know, if we get, come up with good ideas and other directions, let's explore them and so on, because at least go down the road with them. Mm. Because I don't want to feel that we're stifling other creative aspects of the stones, because I always like the stones when they didn't mind to experiment with things, you know, mm. which was a lot of that was down to Brian but mm. in the very, very old days. Um, and I felt we were kind of getting a bit sort of stuck in that one kind of hard rock corner. We weren't even doing ballads really mm. very much. Mm. And um, so I felt that we should go back a little bit to, to being able to go a little bit off the wall mm. sometimes, mm. Um, which I think we've done. Mm. In the, you know, that number that they're mixing, in, yeah. for instance, and I don't think we've done anything like that in ages. And I think you don't need a lot of that sort of thing, but even one or two things like that give you, the, give people the idea that you're not dead as trying things out. So it's the beginning when you, bands usually play what they're playing clubs, and then then, become, then comes a more, um, mm. sometimes more experimental. When I, when I work with Living Colour, I mean they were. Uh, on that first album, the Living Colour album, they, they were just doing the, the act more or less that they did in clubs and they knew the numbers backwards and they weren't really experimenting in the studio um, with uh, probably their second album pitches. They'll probably want to step out a little bit more in different directions. And I think, yeah, from the second, third, maybe albums, I think you get stuck in a, in a groove. It mm. depends. I mean, I don't think it's necessary to do it age. Um, you can be, I mean, some bands are very kind of stuck in grooves from the first album. You know, it's just like, yeah. They invent a style and they just stay right there. We did a, wrote a lot on our own, you know. We, mm. uh, I mean, we wrote a lot together without anyone around, yes. in other words. And um, there's a couple of things that we came up we had already, but most of all the stuff was done in this very compressed time period, mm. January, February this year. Just get up in the morning and have breakfast and just go to it, you know. Right. Like, just the tools I, I would use, uh, um, I had an M1. Uh, synthesizer mm. and some other keyboards, a couple of guitars, different tunings, very simple drum machines, mm. um, and you know, microphones. Right. And just run a cassette. I didn't mess around. And Keith would just, uh, Keith really only played guitar most of the time. He didn't really do a lot of work on keyboards. Right. 
on this. He, he, was, was, he didn't seem to. Um, then we ran it straight to cassette. Um, because I didn't want to mess around. I've given up messing around with like four tracks. You spend all your time trying to make little ripples and not enough time actually creating. Yes. And, um, you know, we worked obviously on our own as well. Yeah. I mean, when one wasn't there, I mean, I would be there on my own and just do things and he would be on his own and do things. But then we'd come together at some point in the day mm. and sort of put things together and just do it like that. And then later on, um, we, uh, the next person we got in was Matt Clifford mm. to, well, we, we would, do songs and he would get keyboard parts mm. and also with, with that point we would be our job to sort of arrange them yeah to get them down to some sort of order and size yeah and there, i do everything that's possible to do i mean sometimes keith and i would sit with two guitars and just pray get certain licks and he would have a lick that would counter what i was playing mm. and i would count if he would come up with a certain riff i would counter that mm. um sometimes i wouldn't play guitar at all i would just sit there and just clap hands and make up top lines mm. Um, sometimes I would just get a drum groove going and just sing to it. Yeah. And sometimes I'd play keyboards and just have just a bass drum going. Mm -hmm. So I'd use every possible combination. Right. Um, and you get different things happening that way. Yeah. So, and then sometimes I would have a lyric idea to start with, and then I would then come to the melody, or sometimes they come at the same time and so on. So, yeah. so every kind of combination I would do, I wouldn't get stuck in one way of doing it very quickly. So a lot of them were just very, very quick things that would just mm -hmm. come out of nowhere. Um, I mean, the, the Arabic one, I would just mess with the keyboard and so on, and keep well, that sounds funny. Why don't you work on that a bit? And I would and you get these things, and then the, the, uh, the lick comes first and so on. And, yeah. and then some of these guitar tunes, like that one, sad, 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 it all came all at once, you know, which is the best way of those kind of numbers. You never yeah. really worry about about them. Um, Keith, I went away for a weekend and Keith came up like, with this really good tune called Mixed Emotions, and so we kind of ar ar arranged all that. And that came very quickly all at once. So a lot of the stuff was done very, very quickly. Mm. But that was good to have that pressure. Yeah. Um, I hope it doesn't reflect that the album was too much of a hurry. But I think, you know, you're going to compromise a little bit, but I think you've got a lot of good energy there.